Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and exciting piece of news. I need all of you to stop what you're doing and pay attention. We are about to go live where President Nixon is signing the Occupational Health and Safety Administration Act into federal law. Here we go, live to Washington with President Nixon. My fellow Americans, in all decisions I have made in my public life, I have always tried to do what is best for the nation. That is why today I am signing the Occupational Health and Safety Administration Act. Or as it is called in Washington, the OSHA Act. OSHA was created to assure safe and healthful conditions for working men and women by setting and enforcing standards and providing training, outreach, education, and compliance assistance. Under OSHA law, employers are responsible for providing a safe and helpful workplace for American workers. Failure to comply with the OSHA Act would be criminal, and I am not a crook. There we have it. The OSHA Act is officially federal law. Now what does that mean for you? Today at 6 o'clock. It's the 6 o'clock news with lead anchor Brent Fazio. Good evening, America. I'm Brent Fazio with HSCU Channel 4 News at 6. And the 6 o'clock news starts now. Today's top story, President Nixon has signed the OSHA Act into federal law, which has a lot of employers asking, what does this mean for me? Great Odin's Raven, so far this year, 1970, we have averaged 38 people being killed on the job every day. Over 14,000 work-related fatalities. The OSHA Act is designed to reduce that rate substantially. They predict that the year 2016, they will have a 65% reduction in work-related fatalities. And something tells me they're right. If you're anything like me, which I doubt because I'm kind of a big deal. Pe people know me. You would hope for a greater reduction than 65%. Remember, every one of these fatalities is a family member that is never going home to their family again. Nixon stated that the OSHAC plans to eliminate workplace hazards by putting in place safety and health standards, including those for asbestos, fall protection, cotton dust, trenching, machine guarding, benzene, personal protective equipment, lead, and many more. Nixon stated that they do foresee significant hazards and unsafe conditions still existing in the workplace, and an estimate that even up to 2020, they could expect up to 3.3 million working men and women suffering serious job-related illnesses. In addition to the direct impact to individual workers, the American people can expect a substantial consequences to the American economy, with experts estimating the financial impact of occupational injuries and illnesses in 2020 to reach up to $60 billion for workers' compensation costs alone. And when taking into consideration loss of productivity, employee training and replacement costs, and the time spent investigating injuries and illnesses, the total cost to the American economy could reach up to $120 billion a year. With all the excitement in Washington, this has the American people asking, who does OSHA cover? HSEU Channel 4 News has that information for you here. OSHA covers most private sector employers and their workers, in addition to some public sector employers in the 50 states and certain territories and jurisdictions under federal authority. Federal OSHA or some OSHA approved state plans cover most private sector employers in all 50 states and other U.S. jurisdictions. There are 22 states that operate an OSHA approved plan. This means that the state operates the job safety and health programs rather than federal OSHA. OSHA does approve and monitor these state plans. Some state plans may cover all areas. For example, some states OSHA plans do not address the maritime industry. Under those circumstances, the maritime industry will fall under federal OSHA. Any person or group may file a complaint concerning a state-run plan to federal OSHA by reaching out to OSHA at OSHA.gov 
which I believe is on a thing called the Internet, which is an old wooden ship used during the Spanish War era for transporting junk and filth to teenage boys. Five other states and Virgin Island have an OSHA plan that covers the public sector employees such as state and local governments. These employees are not covered by the federal OSHA, but do have the same OSHA protections. All federal employees have OSHA protections as well. Although OSHA cannot find federal agencies, they do monitor and conduct inspections on federal agencies. A question we have been getting a lot here at HSCU Channel 4 is who isn't covered by OSHA? self-employed persons, immediate family members of farm employees, and workplace hazards that are regulated by another federal agency. For example, the Mine Safety and Health Administration, or the Department of Energy, or the Coast Guard. All other businesses will fall under OSHA, and under the OSHA Act, employers must provide their workers with workplace that does not have serious hazard and must follow all OSHA safety and health standards. Immediately following the Nixon speech earlier today, an OSHA representative gave this statement in regards to the employer's responsibilities. The OSHA Act will require employers to provide their workers an environment free from recognizable hazards. Employers must try to eliminate or reduce hazards by making feasible changes in the working conditions rather than relying on PPE, such as masks, gloves, or earplugs. Employers must also display the official OSHA job, safety, and health. It's the law poster, which is provided for free at OSHA.gov. Employers must inform workers about chemical hazards, provide training to workers in a language and vocabulary they can understand, keep accurate records of work-related injuries and illnesses, perform tests in the workplace, such as air sampling, that is required by some OSHA standards, provide PPE at no cost to the employee, provide hearing exams or other medical tests required by some OSHA standards, post OSHA citations and injury and illness data where workers can see, notify OSHA within eight hours of a workplace fatality or within 24 hours of any work-related inpatient hospitalization, amputation, or loss of an eye. And they are forbidden to retaliate against workers using their rights under the OSHA law, including their right to report work-related injury or illnesses. Under OSHA law, workers are entitled to working conditions that do not pose a serious risk of harm and are afforded these rights. They can file a confidential complaint with OSHA to have their workplace inspected, receive information and training about the hazards, methods to prevent harm, OSHA standards that apply to the workplace, receive copies of records of work-related injuries and illnesses that occur in the workplace, receive copies of the results from tests and monitoring done to find and measure hazards in their workplace, receive copies of their workplace medical records, participate in an OSHA inspection, and speak in private with the OSHA inspector. File a complaint with OSHA if they have been retaliated against by their employer as the result of requesting an inspection or using any of their other rights under the OSHA Act. File a complaint if punished or retaliated against for acting as a whistleblower. OSHA standards fall into four categories. The construction industry, general industry, maritime, and agriculture. Employers must also comply with the general duty clause. This clause requires employers to keep their workplaces free of serious recognized hazards. OSHA uses the term general industry to refer to all industries not included in agriculture, construction, or maritime. The construction industry is a high hazard industry that comprises of a wide range of activities involving construction, alteration, and or repair. Agriculture industry is a major industry in the U.S. and included growing and harvesting crops as well as livestock. Maritime industry includes the construction and repair and scrapping of vessels as well as the movement of cargo and other materials. 
OSHA has the authority to issue new or revised safety and health standards. The OSHA standard setting process involves many steps and provides many opportunities for public engagement. OSHA can begin the standard setting procedures on its own or in response to recommendation. When OSHA is considering whether to develop a new or revised standard, the agency often publishes a request for information in the Federal Register. This is done to help obtain information and views from interested members of the public. These can be found at www.regulations.gov. OSHA has also been tasked with an enforcement of the occupational health and safety standards. A statement from OSHA clearly identified their intent. When OSHA finds employers who fail to uphold their safety and health responsibilities, the agency takes strong and decisive actions. An OSHA representative stated that inspections are initiated without advance notice, can be conducted using on-site or telephone, investigations are conducted by highly trained compliance officers and conducted based on priorities. The highest priority being imminent danger, catastrophes like fatalities or hospitalizations, worker complaints or referrals, targeted inspections, high injury rates or high hazards, and finally, by follow-up inspection. Current employees do have the right to anonymously request an inspection of their work site by OSHA if they believe there is a serious hazard or that their employer is not following OSHA standards. Employers are not allowed to punish or retaliate against the employee for requesting an inspection. And an OSHA inspection will always begin with the compliance officer presenting their credentials. After the officer will explain the reason for the inspection and describe the scope of the inspection process, the walk-around procedure, employee representation, and employee interview. Following the opening conference, the compliance officer and the employer representative will walk through the portions of the workplace covered by the inspection, looking for hazards that could lead to worker injury or illnesses. After the walk-around, the compliance officer will hold a closing conference with the employer and the employee representative to discuss the findings. If the inspector finds violations of OSHA standards, or serious hazards, OSHA may issue citations and fines. A citation includes methods an employer may use to fix the problem and date by which the corrective actions must be completed. Employers have the right to contest any part of the citation, including whether a violation actually exists. Workers have the right to challenge the deadline by which the corrective actions must be completed. Appeals will be heard by the Independent Occupational Safety and Health Review Commission. OSHA has a severe violator enforcement program that focuses enforcement efforts on employers who willfully and repeatedly endanger workers by exposing them to serious hazards. That sounds like serious trouble right there. OSHA requires employers to record certain types of incidents and maintain these records for five years. We reached out to OSHA to find out what do employers have to record. OSHA sent HSEU Channel 4 an exclusive response stating, OSHA requires employers to reach out to OSHA's nearest area office, either in person or by phone, or by calling OSHA's toll-free number 1-800-321-OSHA within eight hours of work-related fatality or within 24 hours of a work-related inpatient hospitalization, amputation, loss of an eye, or fatal heart attack that occurs at work. OSHA also requires certain covered employers to track and investigate workplace injuries and illnesses and maintain these records for at least five years. Employers with 10 or more employees that are not classified as partially exempt industry must record these work-related injuries and illnesses. These incidents must be recorded on the OSHA 300, 300A, and 301 forms. These forms are available at osha.gov slash recordkeeping slash rkforms.ht ML. A list of partially exempt industries can be found at OSHA.gov slash recordkeeping slash PPT1 slash. The OSHA 300A form must be posted where employees can see each year from February 1st 
to April 30th. This form must also be submitted to OSHA each year by March 2nd. OSHA encourages employers to review and investigate patterns of injuries and illnesses and to conduct investigations of the injuries and illnesses and near misses to prevent similar events in the future. Workers do have a legal right to file a complaint if they believe their workplace has unsafe or unhealthful working conditions. But often, the best and fastest way to get a hazard corrected is to notify your supervisor or employer. In the event that that does not correct the problem, the worker may file a complaint with the nearest OSHA office by phone, email, or fax. A worker may also call 1-800-321-6742 to file a complaint anonymously, but written and signed complaints submitted to OSHA area offices are more likely to result in an on-site OSHA inspection. Most other complaints are usually resolved over the phone. Workers have the right to make employers aware of safety and health concerns, report any work-related injury or illnesses, file a complaint with OSHA, seek an OSHA inspection, or participate in an OSHA inspection, participate or testify in any proceeding related to an OSHA inspection without fear of any form of retaliation from the employer. Retaliation includes firing or laying off, blacklisting, demoting, denying overtime or a promotion, disciplining, denying of benefits, failing to hire or rehire, intimidation, making threats, reassignment affecting prospects for promotion, or reducing hours or pay. If there is a dangerous situation in the workplace, OSHA recommends that the worker bring the condition to the employer's attention. If the dangerous situation is not resolved by the employer, the worker has the right to file a complaint with OSHA. However, workers should not leave the work site merely because they have filed a complaint. If the condition clearly presents a risk of death or serious injury or illness, and there is not time for OSHA to perform an inspection, and the worker has brought it to the intention of the employer, the worker may have a legal right to refuse to work in a situation in which he or she would be exposed to a hazard without fear of retaliation from the employer. The situation must be of such a nature that a reasonable person would conclude that there is a real danger of death or serious harm and that there is not enough time to contact OSHA for an OSHA inspection. OSHA states that they have a great deal of information available to assist employers in complying with their responsibilities under OSHA law. Several OSHA programs and services can help employers identify and correct job hazards, as well as improve their safety and health program. You can also reach out to HSEU Channel 4 News in our business community. We will do our best to help you. We have breaking news just coming in. The Beatles have broken up. Paul McCartney has publicly stated that he is leaving the group. Let It Be will be the last Beatles album. Wow, didn't see that coming today. That is going to do it for all of us here at HSEU Channel 4 News. You stay safe, San Diego. I'm Brent Fazio.